Yes, he did. Jesus. Uh, I'm not speaking from the Bible, from a, about a corrupt politician. Uh, we heard a lot about corrupt politicians in the Jesus paper this morning. Uh, think about this. Uh, if you could come to forward, Daniel, uh, just to remind me of what I'm talking about. To save the <laughs> Corrupt politician that's mentioned in the Bible was looking for a bribe. He cares about uh, we, you. We find it in uh, Acts see, chapter is filled with 24. Him. But Jesus now, loves him. The situation was this. The Apostle him. Paul and so it is had been arrested, Jesus loves you. accused of various crimes of blasphemy, of disturbing uh, and the Jews to and, save you. and of, uh, of the Jewish leadership he for himself and the Jewish course. And, and he was accused also of being a threat to the Roman Empire. That's what Jesus and said. So he, pray for your he was going to eventually end up in pray Rome on trial, and that's actually where he you. died. But when Jesus he was uh, not all people in Jerusalem, Hallelujah. he was actually um, he died in the to a place called Caesarea, and there he he was given a so hearing before the Roman him. governor called uh, Felix. And I think about Felix was this. He role. was a corrupt politician. Wow, well. Actually, he was hey, married buddy, to a woman. Believe he Jesus, stole right? it from someone else. Committed adultery. But you love him as your uh, Lord and your Savior. He was a guy who basically yes, was looking for bribes. He was on the make. He, was, he wanted to He's actually uh, make something of himself. Uh, he wanted to be much higher yeah. than just a governor in, in the uh, yeah, small province of the Roman Empire. He wanted to be someone he big. Be and he, anyway, he was interested in what Paul was going to say about the true Christian faith. And by the way, the true Christian faith will be found in the pages of the Bible, which is why I'm doing a Bible study. Now the thing is, that we're told about him that Paul had literally only been speaking for a few minutes, and he was filled with fear. He was terrified. Uh, in fact, his fear was so great that he just had to bring this conversation to an end. Unthinkable dread. And why? Uh, if I give you an example, there was a famous young manufacturer called Krupp, who uh, operated before the First World War. And he made billions out of, uh, out of the manufacture of armaments. But the thing about Krupp was this, he was terrified of death. I mean, here's the paradox. He created, he created billions of, of different items to do with killing people, but he himself was terrified of death. And Krupp actually uh, was so terrified of death, he didn't even dare mention the word. And on the occasion that his wife actually said, mentioned death, oh, such and such has died, he divorced her. He kicked her out of the house. It was the rule. No one should talk about death before Krupp. Because he was terrified. It was the unmentionable dread. dread. Now, you know, uh, you may be a young person and you may not be worried particularly about dying. Actually, there's loads of people my age who aren't really worried about dying. And I'm not trying to put the fear of death into you. But obviously, it is worthwhile thinking about what happens when we die. When this visible world that we see will no longer be something that we exist in. Will we be just nothing? Will we be meaningless? Bits of dust? Or is there something more? And uh, that's what Paul was talking to this Roman governor about. But you see, the thing is this. This Roman governor, he got terrified when talking to Paul because Paul started talking about three things. And these three things were, he talked about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come. And you'll notice I've said there are three strategies that people often have to avoid talking about these three things. And these three things, the Bible tells us, righteousness. Why would anybody be terrified talking about righteousness, goodness, holiness? Well, the answer is, if you're anything like me, you know you're not righteous. Jesus, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, actually tells us that God looks in the human heart, and he doesn't just look and say, oh, he's a murderer, he's bad, he's religious, he's good. No, Jesus said no. God looks in and sees what we're really like inside. And he sees that the religious man often is full of hate, often full of bitterness, often is proud, often doesn't have a soft heart a loving heart to people, but is actually 
is a murderer in his heart. That's what Jesus says. Uh, he talks about uh, adultery. Now, again, uh, religious people are often fond of condemning people. Oh, you know, she's a prostitute. Oh, he's, he's a, 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 a desperate drug addict. He's an alcoholic. Oh, no. Jesus said this. God looks at the heart. I remember when I was young, I used to sing a folk song. I mean, you know, this, this is embarrassing, I suppose I'm so old, but I used to be a, a kind of a folk singer when I was young. And I remember a song by uh, Judy Collins, you know, show me the whiskey stain on the floor. Show me the drunkard as he, as he walks outside the door and I'll show you a young...